Today I'm going to tell you about three good books to read. So my friend Liz Zorab over at By Their Farm is putting together a project where a bunch of people on YouTube are talking about three of their favorite homesteading books. Liz, who is like the nicest person in the world, asked me to participate. So here are my three selections. This project's actually coming at just the perfect time. Um, as the weather starts to cool down and I'm spending less time outside and more time inside, it's nice to have a good book to read, so I'm looking forward to seeing what other people suggest. Book number one. That's right, it's the granddaddy of all homesteading books, The Good Life. This is the book written by Helen and Scott Nearing that inspired a generation of baby boomers to move back to the land. It's had a massive cultural impact. It's often cited as one of the original handbooks of 20th century homesteading. It's not to say that I believe in everything that the Nearings believed in and, you know, follow their philosophy, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of good lessons and a lot of good advice in this book. And it's really well written, and it's a, I find it to be a very interesting read. At one point a while back, Allison was out in Africa doing something for her job. And so she and I were apart for like a month and a half. And during that time, we both decided to read this book simultaneously. Um, it was nice, you know, just, you know, so when we talked to each other every day, we could talk about what we read in the book and compare notes and kind of like a little uh, mini book club. Allison actually hated the book. Um, she found it kind of boring, but despite the fact that she wasn't a huge fan of the book, she often cites a point that the Nearings make in this book about, you know, leaving everything where you found it and leaving everything in good shape and taking really good care of your equipment. It's one of those things I don't personally do all that well, um, so there's still a lesson I could be learning. Book number two, Restoration Agriculture, Real World Permaculture for Farmers by Mark Shepard. I think this book is an outstanding, amazing reference book. It's also crazy inspirational. When I was starting to initially make plans for our farm here, and try to figure out what I was gonna do in terms of the permaculture orchard and using tree crops, Mark's book was the book that inspired me to really think differently about how to use perennials as a cornerstone of an agricultural enterprise. There's just a lot of great philosophy, a lot of great practical tips, a lot of good advice. Anybody who's thinking about doing something like what we've done here with installing significant amounts of, of trees and using trees as part of their agriculture should read this book. It's got outstanding advice. Mark, who's out, I believe, in Wisconsin, um, is a great teacher. You can look up his videos on YouTube, too. They're totally watchable and very, very interesting. Mark's book is outstanding. And, you know, while I like all three books I'm going to recommend here today, it's probably the book I'd most likely tell you to go run out and buy because it's that good. Book number three. Temple Grandin's Guide to Working with Farm Animals, Safe, Humane Livestock Handling Practices for the Small Farm by Temple Grandin. Temple Grandin is this woman who has been doing agricultural consulting for decades. She actually has autism, which as she's described it in a number of different things, including books and they made a movie about her, um, has helped her actually understand animals better. My name is Temple Grandin. I'm not like other people. She's somebody who advises the cattle industry on how to work with animals. She's developed uh, special shoots and, and ways of working with animals that are considered more humane and less stressful for the animal. So she wrote this book a couple of years back and it's a great practical guide for anybody working with animals on a smaller scale. It covers all sorts of animals, whether it's you know cattle, goats, sheep, um, there's even certain things that I've used uh, in working with the ducks that I learned from this book. It's really great. For me, how you work with an animals and how you treat them humanely and how you minimize their stress is actually very important. Um, it's one of the reasons why we are doing what we're doing here at our farm. And Temple's book has just been an outstanding resource for me, great information, very interesting perspective, good writer. Um, I, I highly recommend it if anyone hasn't checked it out. So uh, definitely look at Temple's book. If you're new to our channel, be sure to click the subscribe button. We're all about starting a small farm here in Northern Vermont and try to tell some stories about what we do here. Be sure to check the books out. I'll leave links down below if you wanna find them somewhere online. Also, uh, be sure to check out the other channels that are participating in this. I know I am. 
I need to stock up my library for the winter. So that's it. Those are my three book recommendations. I hope you've enjoyed these. As the winter hours get long and there's less to do outside, having some good books to read will come in handy.